Russia's invasion of Ukraine has taken tens of thousands of lives, upended millions more, and destroyed entire cities. But these guns are not the only weapons, and this is not Ukraine's only front line. Ukraine! Here, history and memory have become ammunition, fueling a war over Ukraine's very right to exist. When Vladimir Putin invaded Ukraine, he claimed there was no such thing as Ukrainian identity. That Ukraine is and had always been a part of Russia. But by invading, Putin proved the opposite. Over the last 18 months, we saw how his war helped forge the very Ukrainian identity he's long denied. Among the most vivid ways in which Ukrainians are reclaiming Ukraine is through its churches. This Orthodox Christmas Mass in Ukraine's capital, Kyiv, might look and sound like it's a thousand years old. But one thing about it is very new. It's the first time in centuries that this service has been spoken in the Ukrainian language, rather than Russian. That's because the Moscow-linked church that once called this magnificent 11th century monastery home has been evicted. Now Ukraine's own Orthodox Church is celebrating here. This is the first time this church is celebrating here. How do you feel about that? I couldn't believe it. Tears appeared in my eye, and I cried and rejoiced and shouted and said, God, I lived up to this day. I asked God for one thing, to live to this day, to hear a prayer in Ukrainian, right here. The loyalty of that Moscow-linked church has lately come under official suspicion. Their church is raided, their clerics arrested. Ukraine's theological revolution hasn't been without controversy, even sometimes coming to blows. But for many Ukrainians, it's time they reclaimed their religious independence. How does it feel to hear mass said in Ukrainian at this church? For us, personally, as clergy, it's similar to the deoccupation of Ukrainian lands. Likewise, the spiritual deoccupation of the church took place today. The date Christmas is celebrated also became part of the battle. Some Ukrainians decided not to celebrate on January 7th, the Orthodox holiday. Instead, they celebrated earlier, when most Western Christians observe the holiday. Lesia Zadilska and her whole family huddled for a traditional feast on this non-traditional date. The electricity was out. Russia's bombs had been targeting the power grid. One of key reasons for us, because it's culturally uh, closer to what we want to uh, celebrate, and um, and also that we feel closer uh, culturally to uh, the Western world uh, than the Orthodox world. So, is this a rejection of Russia and an embrace of the West? It's partly like that. <laughs> Both churches are almost theologically identical. Their shared roots date back a millennium to a medieval Slavic state known as Kievan Rus. This opera depicts one of its great early leaders, Yaroslav the Wise. It's a common history Putin has weaponized, claiming modern Russians and Ukrainians are one people, with Moscow their spiritual and political capital. But he was hardly the first. Successive Russian leaders have long tried to deny Ukrainian identity, Moscow viewed it as a dangerous threat to Russian unity. So when Ukrainians stage a play like this one, are they reclaiming their identity, their history? Yes, these works of art are very important for restoring our identity, which had been erased for centuries, first by the Russian Empire, then by the Soviet Union. But for Putin and his people, Ukrainian nationalism also represents a Western invasion. He believes American and European cultural expansion have infected Ukraine, eroding traditional Christian family values. At the top of Putin's cultural hit list, the LGBT community. The Russian leader and his allies have persecuted sexual minorities at home with homophobic laws and even election campaign ads. It's an irony that Putin's invasion and anti-gay rhetoric has actually improved gay people's standing in Ukraine, which has had a history of homophobia. Putin's invasion has brought many gay and queer Ukrainian men and women to the front lines, where their patriotism and professionalism impressed the public and softened homophobic attitudes. The invasion changed it a lot, actually. How do you think the invasion changed it? 
Uh, first, uh, we have a lot of LGBTQ soldiers who are opened up, who are uh, saying about their sexuality and their gender, gender identity clearly. So people understand that LGBTQ people are also fighting for our freedom. And uh, there are a lot of volunteers who are also que queer, like who are helping the army. And the second thing is that uh, people see that homophobia, transphobia, sexism, racism are Russian values. Because Russia and Belarus, they say a lot about it, that like, uh, gays are the bad people in Russia, in Belarus, elsewhere. And like, people understand that they don't want to have anything in common with Russia. So that's why they start to rethink their own homophobia here in Ukraine. For some Ukrainians, reclaiming Ukrainian identity means grasping for traditions and concepts even beyond their borders. Toward Western Europe or even the United States. Gridiron football, that quintessential American sport, is growing in popularity, particularly among soldiers fighting for Ukraine armed with American weapons and eager to align themselves with the West instead of the East. We are like a nation now, separate all that we have from like Russian history, starting from language, culture and ATC. And uh, of course we create our new Ukrainian culture and uh, why not? We need like new, new orienteers like yeah. And this can be like this culture, American football culture, and can be one of them. In Putin's version of history, Ukraine is not just loyal to Russia, but a historical part of it. He points to the Cossacks, a semi-nomadic people who lived on Ukraine's vast steppes. Marauding, pillaging, and standing up to Ukraine's many invaders, the Cossacks are kind of the cowboys of Ukraine's collective consciousness. They swore loyalty to Moscow in 1654, but they're still immortalized here, as the original Ukrainian warriors. It's why when Russian prisoners of war arrive at this prison in Western Ukraine, they walk past pictures of Cossack leaders or headmen. Why are you showing those to the prisoners as they walk in? Uh, why we are showing the prisoners? It's a part of, you know, uh, they know nothing about our history. So maybe uh, they can uh, look at that and be interested a little bit. These prisoners of war all speak Russian. They were all captured fighting for Russia, but many here were born in Ukraine. They're from the country's east and south. Although partly occupied by Russia, some here are still genuinely loyal to Moscow. Putin has said Kyiv oppresses these Russian speakers, even commits genocide against them. In fact, Ukraine has long been welcoming toward Russian speakers. Ukraine's president speaks Russian as his first language, and nearly half the country speaks Russian at home. But that's changed since Russia's invasion in 2014. The law passed in 2017 made Ukrainian the language of study in schools, and a 2019 law made it compulsory in most official communication. But since Russia's invasion last year, ordinary Ukrainians are taking linguistics matters into their own hands. This bookstore is gathering up these Russian language books, not okay. to sell, well, but to destroy. In history, burning books is a byword for oppression and totalitarianism. Are you guys burning books? No, we are not burning books. Yeah, we, we just recycle it. Okay, but there's a political motive behind this, right? There's a political idea behind what you're doing here. Are you cleansing history? Uh, no, we're not cleansing history. We were occupied by the USSR for a very long time, and our people were just waiting, waiting for a time that we can talk about that and remove some of the consequences of it. Even if Russia and Ukraine are now enemies, their histories are so closely intertwined, it can be difficult to untangle. A huge proportion of Ukrainians either speak Ukrainian as a second language or struggle to speak it at all. At this language school near Kyiv, Ukrainian patriots are trying to make amends. Are you seeing a lot more Ukrainians signing up to take Ukrainian? Yes, now it's big. Everybody wants to get rid of everything Russian and not to speak the language of the enemy. For some here, embracing Ukrainian means changing the way they speak, their names, even the language in which they think. You're a Ukrainian. I am. You're here to learn Ukrainian. That's right. Why? My country is Ukraine, and I want to speak the national language of my country. Yeah. yeah right? Uh, when, when we go to Spain, for example, people who live there, yeah, they speak Spanish. Sure. So why should we speak Russian, which is not our language? 
I, I think that this just shows uh, what kind of people we are. Mm -hmm. It shows us that we are a different nationality. So they want us to believe that we are their younger brothers, which is not true. We are different. Do you feel ashamed to speak Russian? Yes. Really? Yes. From the language Ukrainians speak to who they love and how they worship, Putin's invasion is eroding Russian influence here and reversing decades of oppression. This is one place where Ukraine buries its tormentors. These statues stood a silent sentinel over Larisa Semenko's youth, spent as a Soviet citizen. Now, as a history professor, she presides over them, monuments to the memories Ukraine would like to forget. Some people would say, good or bad, this is all still a part of Ukrainian history. So why take it down? Uh, yes, that was a part of the history. But this was a very cruel part. Secondly, we have to understand that these monuments are a symbol of that dictatorship. When Vladimir Putin invaded, he said that Ukrainian identity and nationhood were illegitimate. But has he actually helped create a Ukrainian identity by invading? Russia hasn't recognized the identity and independence of the Ukrainian nation for centuries. With his invasion, Putin accelerated the process of our consolidation, our unity in protest against Russian dictatorship. I think that now we will, probably, be free of the influence of the Russian state. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.